Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church, everybody. We hope everybody enjoyed the last lesson that we did. Sorry about the technical difficulties with the um, with the internet. Um, I did want to apologize to Sister Zaba. Um, I did not know you were a, a, a woman in the chat, so please forgive me for that. I know from now on, I sincerely apologize for that. And also, we apologize for not being able to pray at the end of the lesson. Um, seeing that the internet cut off. So, how you willing would be able to pray at the end of this lesson. Um, family matters, how to deal with loved ones. This is the uh, continuation uh, lesson from the last lesson, kind of, sort of. It's on the same topic, but it's touching on other things that are needful. Excuse me. Uh, Brother Cotherford, you got anything before we get started? No, brother. I'm ready to begin. All right, let's go. We all have loved ones in our life, and the gospel will either bring us closer or create separation in relationships. Can you read Matthew chapter 10, verse 34 to 37, please? Thank not that I am come to send peace on earth. Excuse me. Thank not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man of variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. If we be willing to perform acts of faithfulness in the fruits of the Spirit, obeying the law, despite family reactions for the sake of belief in Yache, we will be worthy of him. For his name's sake, we have been, we have, excuse me, for his name's sake, We've given up things that we formerly were known for in this world and amongst those that know us. Can you read First Peter chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, please? For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lascivious, lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. Wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess or riot, speaking evil of you. And we see through our changes that we're making in our lives, for Yache's sake, we're not well spoken of by everyone we formerly knew. And it's a trial in our family lives to be an example of Christ by our walk in meekness. Can we read first? Here it goes. Peter chapter 4, verse 12, please. Sure, First Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you? We have to be ever mindful of our words in this trial because it can defile us, be a stumbling block, or make us an hypocrite. Can you read James chapter 3, verse 6, and then verse 9 and 10, please? Okay, James chapter 3, verse 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and set up on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. James chapter 3, verse 9. Therewith bless we Elohim, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of Elohim. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing, my brethren. These things ought not to my my brother and these things ought not so to be. Going hard on folks we care about isn't the way of a Christian. Nor is going hard on the ones we don't know. It actually pushes people away from the faith. Can you read Sirach 22 and 22, please? If thou hast opened thy mouth against thy friend, fear not. For there may be a reconciliation except for upbraiding or pride or disclosing of secrets or of a treacherous wound. For for these things, every friend will depart. Speaking pridefully, speaking wounding words or upbraiding folks is a common fault when folks come into some new information. The tongue has power to heal and to kill. We have to be mindful of what we say, to whom we say it, and when we say it. Some folks aren't ready to hear certain information, and we aren't showing mercy by trying to give it unto them. 
when they aren't ready or possibly don't want it. Can you read Matthew 7, verse 6, please? Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Notice, people that behave as dogs or swine, they'll trample the words under their feet. They won't listen. And then they'll turn it onto you, and you'll receive a block from doing that unwisely. We speak gently so we don't get into passion with others. When dealing with those outside of the faith, we shouldn't be overzealous, casting pearls upon unforward ground, then coming around the brethren. Can you read James chapter 3, verse 11 to 13, please? Do if a fountain sent forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh? Who is a wise man endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his work with meekness of wisdom. So our wisdom is shown in how we handle our conversations and meekness. That's how we show the knowledge that we have in our Ahayim. Continue verse 14, please. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. Interesting. Strife means angry or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues, conflict. Strife with loved ones in our hearts or our words that come out from our heart is no glory because it's against the truth. Can you read James chapter 3, verse 15 to 18, please? This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Getting in strife brings about evil works. Continue, please. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure and peaceable, gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. That's how we should interact with loved ones as Christians, according to those fruits right there. Continue, please. And the fruit, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Through se those separation in beliefs will come in loved ones. I'm sorry, those separate, those, excuse me, those separation in beliefs will come with loved ones. We have to follow peace with all men. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, please. Hold on, Kyle, I'm going to make sure that we're live. Just to make sure. Okay. Okay, we are. Nice. All right, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. If we don't walk peacefully with all, though they may have a different belief or be living a certain way, we won't see the Lord, the end goal of the law, being blinded by the veil of our flesh and the works of the flesh. Some of us have been lions among our family members. Can you read Sirach chapter 4, verse 30, please? Be not as a lion in thy house, nor frantic among thy servants. A lion means violence in Hebrew. Violence, by definition, is intense, turbulent, or furious, and often destructive action or force. Being as lions amongst loved ones was that intensity where we thought we were passionate, but it was intemperance. Maybe even getting frustrated or grieved, wanting folks to change or for them to listen, but it was just angry temper leading us astray. These works will keep us in the old man, and we won't be able to put away our old life for Christ's life. Can you read Matthew chapter 10, verse 30, please? You want 10 and 30? I do not. Okay. You want 10 and 30. <laughs> I do that about every time, man. <laughs> Matthew 10, verse 39, please. Okay. He that findeth his life, you're welcome. He that findeth his life shall lose it. 
and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. If his spirit doesn't consume us, we will be cursed, being lion like. Can you read Gospel of Thomas chapter 9, please? Yeah, Jay said. Nine. Okay. The Gospel of Thomas chapter 9, verse 9. Yahshua said, Blessed is the lion which becomes a man. Excuse me. Blessed is the lion which becomes man when consumed by man. And cursed is the man whom the lion consumes when the lion becomes man. The devil is the lion. When we do things in anger, wrath, we're at his right hand with a lion. And he becomes us, ruling our actions and our thoughts. We Coming from this lion-like life and lion-like lion -like ways, we need the man, Yache, to change us from be being lions to make us become a man, which is his spirit being formed in us so that our actions and our thoughts and our words be him, not ourselves. Yache never said to leave off the yoke of humility and meekness towards others. The losing of our lives requires us to put on his life and character in us. Can you read Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, please? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's how we should be around loved ones, whether they believe or not. That's how Christ preached unto men by his walk. Can you read Testament of Dan, chapter 6, verse 9, please? For he is true and long-suffering, meek and lowly, and teaches by his works the law of Elohim. Walking in these spirits before all, believers and unbelievers alike, is how we preach by our actions, not through our talk. Can you read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5, please? And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words as man's wisdom. Excuse me. Ah. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of Elohim. This preaching of demonstration of the fruits of the spirit is how we confess him by our actions. Can you read Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 and 33, please? Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me, deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Notice, brothers and sisters, this confession or denial pertains to our behavior, not merely what we say. We deny him by talking and our works don't align with our speech. Can you read first, to, I'm sorry, Titus chapter 1 verse 16, please? They profess that they know Elohim, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. That's what we not, don't want to be, denying our Elohim by being reprobate, that's staying in our sins, unwilling to go through the process of change, or being abominable and disobedient, not obeying his fruits of the spirit and his law. Let us suffer as Christians, not as evildoers. Can you read 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 13 to 16, please? 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 13. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and the Elohim resteth upon you. For the spirit of glory and of Elohim resteth upon you. But their part he, on their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. If any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify Elohim on this behalf. It's okay to be evil spoken of for going about things in a meek manner, 
But if we are walking in the flesh, being prideful or condescending or overbearing towards our loved ones, there's no glory in that. You'll find some folks glory in getting rejected from others as if we have the truth, or others just won't receive it. But many times the way we spoke to the person wasn't upright. The timing of when we spoke wasn't was out of season. And or how we felt in our heart wasn't pure, but we can't see the beam in our eyes because we're trying to convert everyone else instead of focusing on our own shortcomings. Now, with loved ones, there is a separation that comes when following Christ. In our hearts, we have to prefer to go after him rather than turn back to consider the relationships that we could lose if we do so. Can you read Luke chapter 9, verse 61 and 62, please? Luke 9 and 61. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at my home, at my house. And Yahshua said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of Elohim. Once we come into the knowledge of the humility we are to walk in, no relationship should hinder us from pressing forward onto the goal of charity. Can you read Matthew chapter 10, verse 38, please? And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. We'll find it to be an affliction to press forward and change as a person along with the dissension that comes between family due to the gospel. It is a trial to see who will bear the fruits of the spirit in the midst of it or not, because his people must bear his cross of sacrificing the flesh and bearing the fruits. The admonitions for interactions with our parents, for example, as loved ones are as follows. Can you read the Ephesians chapter six, Verse 1 and 2, please. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Amen. Amen. In-laws are our parents, too. Can you read Tobit, chapter 10, verse 12, please? And he said to his daughter, Honor thy father and thy mother-in-law which are now thy parents, that I may hear a good report of thee. And he kissed her. So we treat our in-laws as our parents, because this is what's right in the sight of Allah and what is true. Let's get our admonitions on how we are to honor our family. Can we read Sirach chapter 3, verse 7, please? He that feareth the Lord will honor his father, and will do service unto his parents as to his masters. Notice it didn't say he would honor his believing parents. Right. Or it's his parents. It doesn't matter what they believe or their lifestyle. We still have to honor them. Going hard and angering our parents because they don't believe what we believe is not well. And forsaking our parents is blasphemous. Can we read Sirach chapter 3, verse 16, please? He that forsaketh his father is as a blasphemer. He that angereth his mother is cursed of Elohim. King Proverbs 19 and 26, please. He that wasteth his father and chaseth away his mother is a son that causeth shame and bringeth reproach. All right, Proverbs 30, verse 11 and 12, please. There is a generation that curseth their father and doeth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet it's not washed from their filthiness. There we see what spirit, what's leading us to treat our parents like this or loved ones like this. Wise in our own conceits. Remember, knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. So we can see the difference of spirits of how we are to operate, as opposed to how we may have been operating in the past. Can, can you also read Proverbs 17 and 25, please? A foolish son is a grief to his father, and bitterness to her that bear him. So we see the foolishness we're walking in, what it brought about in our relationships with our family. Let us not be foolish anymore, and be examples of believers to our parents and loved ones. Can you read Sirach chapter 7, verse 27 and 28, please? Honor thy father with thy whole heart, and forget not the sorrows of thy mother. 
Remember that thou was begotten of them, and how canst thou recompense them, that things that they have done for thee? Can you read Sirach chapter 3, verse 8 and 9, please? Honor thy father and mother both in word and deed, that a blessing may come upon thee from them. For the blessing of the father establishes the houses of children, but the curse of the mother ruleth out foundations. We have to live peaceably with loved ones as much as possible. Can you read Romans chapter 12, verse 18, please? And it's for if, good reason. I apologize, Akbar. Okay. Sorry. It's for good reason we need to have a good relationship as best as we can with our parents because we see the blessings come from our father. And if our mother curses us, it roots out foundations, right? Can you read Romans chapter 12, verse 18, please? Mm -hmm. If it be possible, as much as life in you, the peaceably with all men. Verse 21, please. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Doing good will bring blessings upon us. Can you read Sirach chapter 3, verse 3 to 6, please? Whoso honor of his father maketh an atonement for his sins, and he that honor of his mother is as one that layeth up treasure. Whoso honor of his father shall have joy of his own children, and when he maketh his prayer, he shall, shall be heard. He that honoreth his father shall have a long life, and he that is obedient unto the Lord shall be a comfort to his mother. Now that's important to see that if we are grievance to our family members or to our parents specifically here, that shows we're not being obedient unto the Lord. Because if we're walking in faith, we'll be a comfort to our mother. And also, it's important to have this healthy relationship with our parents because if we honor our father, we'll have joy in our own children and our prayers will be heard. So hopefully this helps to understand. It even helps atone for our sins by honoring our father. All right? And it lays up treasure with our mother by treating our mother well in honor. Can you read Ephesians 6 and 4, please? And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. We don't provoke people by being meek and gentle as our Lord, even as our children, treating them as people and human beings as well. Can you read Sirach? Ah, not Sirach. I'm sorry. First, nope. <laughs> Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1, please. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold towards you. An idolatrous parent can be won over by Allah Hayyam working miracles in your life. If we have to leave our parents, it's wise to leave on peaceable terms with their blessing. Can you read Jasher chapter 79, verse 7, please? And Moses hearkened to all that Ahia commanded him. And he returned to his father-in-law and told him what happened. And Raul and Ruel said to him, Go in peace. And Moses rose up to go to Egypt. And he took his wife and his sons with him. And when he was at an inn in the road, Elohim's angel came down and sought an occasion against him. So there we see Ruel at this time. He was an unbeliever. But Moses still did things meekly and had a good relationship with him when he was given, he was given a blessing before he left. Jethro was converted after hearing how Ahiah delivered them from Egypt in Joshua 82 and 4. You also have Terah, the father of Noah. He converted in Joshua chapter 12, verse 64 to 70, after Elohim delivered Abram from Nimrod's fire, and he spoke words of truth to him as well. So hopefully that helps understand that. Well, let's look at what happened, actually, before I speak. Can you read Jubilee chapter 12, verse 28 to 30, please? Uh, just so everybody knows, uh, Ruel and Jephro are the same person. Ah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> My bad. 
Yeah, you can go ahead and explain it. Well, just to see that when it comes to our parents or loved ones, parents and loved ones, we see what Moses did and Abram did. Moses, they waited on Alahayim to bring about an event that will cause their parents to see like, hey, something's wrong and there needs to be a change. So we, walking in wisdom, need to let our family members be, continue growing in humility and setting an example and wait for Alahayim to create or do some marvelous act or deed to where it would inspire others to say like, hey, like what's going on? Like how that happened? When then you can say, Alahayim did it. So through faith in Yahshua, things been changing. And right. let Alahayim work in their hearts to inspire them to turn a different way rather than trying to browbeat them with information or go hard about things they're doing or trying to correct them in a whole bunch of things. From seeing the examples of what converted people's unbelieving parents in the scripture. Can you read Jubilees chapter 12, verse 28 to 30, please? Mm -hmm. And it, came to, and it came to pass in the fifth year of the first week that he spoke to his father and informed him that he would leave Haran and go into the land of Canaan to see it and return to him. And Terah his father said unto him, Go in peace. May the eternal Elohim make thy path straight. And Ahiah be with thee and protect thee from all evil and grant unto thee grace, mercy, and favor before those who see thee there. Before these before those who see thee. And may none of the children of men have power over thee to harm thee. Go in peace. And if thou seest a land pleasant to the eyes to dwell in, then arise and take me to thee, and take Lot with thee, the son of Haran, thy brother, as thy own son. I be with thee. And the whore thy brother leave with, with me till thou returnest in peace, and we go with thee all together. You see, what transpired now for understanding terror this is the same father that tried to get abraham killed back in chaldea because right. he was upset and it shows how abraham even had his growth because he did what he did he went and destroyed his father's idols being frustrated with what his father was doing then it got in the situation that his father got upset and tried to get him killed now we see the gentleness after the thing happened, he talked to his father about what was going on. His father was willing to hear because his, his life was in danger too. The whole situation, his brother, sadly, his brother, um, Haran. I'm sorry. What was the other brother's name? Haran. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, Haran, Haran and the whore. Yeah. Haran ended up dying in the situation. So it was something to make his father like take a step back and reassess things. And his father was then willing to listen to him. And he converted. You hear the blessing he's given his son now as opposed to just trying to get him killed before. So you can see how waiting on Elijah to provide the right season and, and environment for people to hear is wise. Okay. There are also instances where your loved ones aren't going to do right and you have to separate. So from those examples, we see when you have unbelieving parents, we ought to wait on Allah Hayyam to work some miracle to open their hearts and then pray. He gives us the words to know what to say, to turn them onto the faith. In the meantime, we just have to continue sending an example of a believer respecting them and their lifestyle choices. Going hard, trying to convert them isn't a wise option for them. Um, sorry, it's not a wise option. Abraham, also you may find in other family situations, Abraham had to separate from Lot peaceably, yet he didn't lose communication with him or stop caring about his well-being in Genesis chapter 13, verse 1 to 12. So you can understand, even though there may be some loved ones we have to separate from because they're making our life situation hard, like Lot, he was doing something that Abraham asked him not to do, and he continued doing it. So Abraham said, hey, we're brethren. Let's separate from each other so that we can dwell in peace. And he didn't stop caring about it until if anybody give you any trouble, let me know. I'll be there. So you can understand how we ought to interact with loved ones. All right? 
and lot got into trouble mm -hmm. you know he got into a bad situation that wasn't his fault he didn't bring it about i okay. want to be sure because there's some family members they go get themselves in a situation that they shouldn't have got in right. they brung it upon themselves that doesn't mean we have to go get ourselves in a jam because of them a lot literally people came to conquer the area and he was living there peaceably and ended up getting caught up in it. He didn't bring it upon himself. Okay. Now you also have examples with Rachel and Leah. They were being taken advantage of by their parent and had to agree with their husband to leave for the well-being of their family. So you see how you gotta look at what's in the best interest of your family, you know, when dealing with those who may not be treating you well or have your best interests at heart. Jacob's father-in-law didn't convert and treated Jacob badly. And it got to a point where Jacob had to deal wisely with him because he was trying to treat him bad. And later, after Jacob had left, his father came and found him. You may have read his story where his father came and he was going hard at him, trying to give him a hard time. Allah had mercy and turned the heart of Laban to let Laban know not to touch him. There again, we see letting Allah work things out for us. And they ended up coming to terms of peace. And Jacob went about with his father's blessing to continue on his journey. And sadly, Laban didn't honor the agreement, but that was on him. We're looking at what we're supposed to do as believers by the examples. So there are instances where you have to separate from loved ones for your well being. And hopefully, being able to be on a peaceable terms after that, Lord willing. Be mindful to do things in the fruits and meekness and gentleness to be sure if there's not a means for there to be peace, it's not on your part or anything that you've done. David's father-in-law wanted to kill him. Yet David didn't render evil for evil to his father Saul. To see we have to overcome evil with good as Paul teaches us to do. There is a reward for all the situations we have to go through for the sake of the faith in Yache. Can you read Matthew 19, verse 27 and 29, please? Matthew chapter 19, verse 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all, and follow thee. What shall, what shall we have therefore? Matthew chapter 19, verse 29. And every one that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. Amen. This journey is not in vain. May Ahaya be with us in all our trials and experiences. Hopefully this is edifying and helpful for growth in our hearts, in our walk, and in our interaction with others. Anything else, Zachwa? Yeah. Um, give me one moment. We definitely have to pray out, but um, let me touch on something. I just remember something that I should have mentioned after you done. Um, um, the word forsake, I wanted to touch on that um, so that everybody can have a proper understanding of what Yachi is actually talking about. The word forsake is G863. It means to send, to send forth. So you can send somebody away from you. It's to forsake them, right? In various applications, cry, to even cry about somebody, or forgive, to actually forgive somebody of something they've done for you done against you forsake lay aside it also means to leave or to let alone like to stop dealing with them let be or let go or let have 
So if they have something that belongs to you and it's causing a quarrel, let them have it. Forget about it. Leave it alone. Omit. Put away or send away, remit, suffer, or yield up. I thought the definition for sake was very interesting in regards to the context. Thank you. And there was, I forgot to add the example Abraham said when interacting with folks. When, his, when Sarah had died in his interaction with the Canaanites, he was patient and meek and spoke to them gently about giving him a burial place. It was in the book of Jubilees about chapter 18 or 19. And that was a good example for us of how we are not to boast ourselves in the midst of people, regardless of situation, whether it's a joyous situation or a sad situation. That's a great example. He was patient in the midst of it all. And uh, with that, um, if you don't have anything else to add, would you like to pray? Or you like? Uh, I think I prayed last time. I'm gonna go ahead and let you do it this time. Okay. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Thank you, Ahaya, Allahayam, for your mercy upon us and the grace to show us ourselves and your blessing through our Lord Yache. May you strengthen our hearts to endure our, our trials and to be joyful in enduring the chastening as we grow to become new creatures in our Lord Yache Christ. We pray all men come to the knowledge of the truth and we pray we escape the things to come to be worthy to stand before the Son of Man. In the name of the Lord Yache, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. We well, hope everybody enjoyed the lesson today. Um, if you have any questions about the two lessons we did today, please send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail.com. Um, we do have the PDF notes on the website, so you can definitely go and check that out and get the notes from the lessons. Um, if we're going a little bit too fast for you, um, we know we, we try to um, we try to make the time shorter on the lessons so that um, for whatever people have going on with their days um, so that we're not holding people up uh, so with with that um, the PDFs are, are are amazing because you can actually go back on your own time and write notes in and whatever whatever you need to do for your growth for your edification um, brother Cuthbert, for you got anything Fellowship call um, time. Um, we did two lessons today, so we're not gonna do a, a members meeting today, but we will we will catch up with them during the week. Okay. All right. So for all the members, uh, I know we probably lost a lot of people from um, coming on on the second lesson and being cut off. A lot of people aren't gonna get the memo, but it's okay. So we'll we'll catch all the members um, during the week this week and we'll cut, catch up with everybody. All right. all right, everybody. Well, enjoy the rest of your Shabbat today and for those that are on the other side of the world, you know, enjoy the first day of the week. May I bless you and keep you this week and may, may you keep in, you keep Elohim in all your works. All right? Amen. Shout out to everybody.